The Bitcoin craze is sweeping the world with a single Bitcoin now valued at over 8,000 US dollars. Korea is no exception. The country's Bitcoin trading volume is the third largest in the world after Japan and the United States. Some futurists herald Bitcoin as the future of currency, while others are reminded of the Dutch tulip mania of the 17th century. Is Bitcoin a disruptive currency with a long-term future or a speculative bubble, much like the tulip bulbs in the Dutch golden age? That's the topic we're exploring on this week's Upfront. Trading volumes for virtual currencies such as Bitcoin are rapidly rising. Virtual currency is digital money that is only traded online and does not exist in the physical world. 전자화폐는 전자적으로 거래되는 모든 화폐를 이야기를 합니다. 그래서 전자지로도 될수 있고요. 신용카드도 될수 있고 아니면 뭐 사이버도 도토리도 모두 전자화폐에 들어가는데요. 그 중에서 블록체인 기술을 이용한 암호화폐들을 요새는 가상화폐라고 부르고 있습니다. Contrary to Facebook credits and other virtual currencies that are run by an internet service provider, Bitcoin works without an administrator. Instead, bitcoins are mined by people solving complex equations with computers. 한 비트코인 계좌에서 다른 계좌로 돈을 아니면 또는 비트코인을 옮길 때그 거래를 장부에 기록을 하는 행위를 마이닝이라고 부르거든요. 그리고 그 마이닝 행위에는 전자, 전기 그리고 CPU 파워 그리고 노력이 들어갑니다. 그 노력에 대한 보상으로 지금은 새로 발행되는 비트코인을 제공하고 있고요. Of more than hundreds of digital currencies that are being traded in the world now, Bitcoin was the first one to come into existence. It was invented by Satoshi Nakamoto, an alliance for an anonymous programmer in 2009. The peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system allows a transfer of money between two individuals and remains unaffected by changes in exchange rates and interest rates. Every transaction is registered in a public ledger known as blockchain, which is distributed around the user network, making the currency forgery-proof and hack-proof. Blockchain 기술은 장부를 기록하는 기술이라고 생각을 하시면 됩니다. 그러니까 비트코인의 예를 들면 한 계좌에서 다른 계좌로 비트코인을 옮기게 되면 그 계좌 이 계좌에서 저 계좌로 돈이 올라갔다는 기록을 남겨야 하잖아요. 그그 그 기록을 남기는 과정 또는 기술. 를 블록체인 기술이라고 부르고요. 기록된 거래를 수정하기 위해서는 그동안 이 거래를 기록하기 위해 드렸던 CPU 파워의 50% 이상을 투입을 해야 하기 때문에 너무 비싸서 수정하는 기록이 사실상 조작이 불가능하다라고 이야기를 하는 겁니다. With a global virtual currency market topping 177 billion US dollars. It is classified as a financial asset in the United States, the UK, and Germany. In April this year, Japan recognized Bitcoin as a legitimate method of payment by making revisions to its Payment Services Act. However, Bitcoin is still not an official currency here in Korea. On this week's Upfront, we take a look at the latest Bitcoin craze and discuss a range of issues surrounding the leading cryptocurrency. For today's discussion, we're joined by two experts. Please welcome uh, Jay Ernst Lee, professor at Hanyang University. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, Lee Yoon Sok, senior research fellow at the Korea Institute of Finance. Thanks Good for joining us. Professor Lee, why, uh, first of all, is Bitcoin being hailed as a revolutionary and futuristic currency? What is so revolutionary about it? Because coin is core asset for financial industry. Uh, which is core asset for government to control whole economy. Mm. The concept of money is changing because of its Bitcoin. So let me elaborate later on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Then, uh, Dr. Lee, could you tell us about some of the concerns that are associated with Bitcoin? Well, I think um, uh, the major concerns surrounding uh, the issue of Bitcoin is uh, the fact that Bitcoin itself is not really a legal tender. Mm. So it's not really recognized as an official currency. And when you have uh, the government not recognizing uh, it as an official currency, there are many issues. Uh, most notably is the issue that not everybody is willing to accept 
Bitcoin mm -hmm. as a, uh, a sort of a money. Uh, second thing uh, surrounding that would be obviously since it's it's treated as a commodity, um, there are consumer protection issues because mm -hmm. you know we've seen various uh, cases where uh, Bitcoin was used, misused as uh, a, a means of fraud and uh, deception. deception. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of uh, remaining issues that the government, many governments around the world, have yet to regulate uh, regarding the issuance of bitcoins. Yeah, and and also what often comes up uh, are Ill illicit activities that are associated right. with bitcoin, like money laundering or that's tax That's a very evasion. good point that you uh -huh. raised. Uh, uh, many governments are worried about uh, bitcoin being used, misused as a means of money laundering mm -hmm. or even uh, financing terrorism. So uh, there's an international body called the FATF, which deals with the uh, money laundering, anti-money laundering uh, regulations, and they are seriously cons considering, uh, and they have actually been recommending uh, various uh, countries to heavily regulate uh, the misuse of bitcoins being used as purposes of money laundering. Mm. Right. The Bitcoin debate essentially comes down to one simple question of whether it is actually a currency. Because if it is, we should be able to use it in transactions. Uh, but here in Korea, at least, it's very difficult to find places that accept Bitcoin as a method of uh, payment. I think it's considered more of an investment, like, um, right. uh, like stocks. Right. Um, do you consider Bitcoin to be a currency? Well, if we look at like the you know, basic uh, definition mm. of a currency, uh, so-called currency, there are actually three categories that have to be satisfied. The first is it has to be a medium of exchange. Mm. And if you uh, look at Bitcoin, it, not, it does not necessarily satisfy that you know, qualification because mm. not everybody mm. is willing to use Bitcoin as a medium of, of exchange. Mm -hmm. The second uh, qualification is uh, means as of a store, storing value. There's a very high volatility uh, of Bitcoin prices. So although in some cases you can use it as a means to store value, mm. but in some cases it's going to be uh, a nightmare for you. You could lose the value exactly. of, uh, altogether. Yeah. So again, that uh, second qualification is not uh, satisfied. Mm. The third, can we use it as a unit of account? Unit of account means when you use Bitcoin as, say, uh, a unit, oh. a currency unit. As so, in one Bitcoin, or two yeah, Bitcoins. I mean, oh. or you, when you, you know, bookkeep uh, uh, some, you know, say, balance sheet, see, and you use uh, Bitcoin as a... Oh, for know, accounting purposes. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. Uh -huh. So the third qualification has mm -hmm. to be met and it has to be enforced by the government mm. because you can't use unit of account, say, you know, you can't use apples as unit of account because not all, you know, people are mm -hmm. willing to accept apples as a unit of account. I mostly agree with uh, what Dr. Lee said, but uh, another aspect, mm -hmm. this is very early stage of the Bitcoin. But in my personal observation, this is a revolutionary change in financial history, which has not yet completed, just the beginning stage. Mm -hmm. But in many aspects, uh, first of all, a Bitcoin itself is whether there are many arguments is whether a regulatory environment would accept it as a currency or not, mm. leaving behind, uh, you know, the technology which is backing up the Bitcoin is really revolutionary technology, which will change the whole paradigm of financial industry. There can be a lot of, you know, uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, not only Bitcoin, there are many things. Yeah. So we should not just stick to only Bitcoin, but the variation of the cryptocurrencies starting from the Bitcoin, the impact it can bring. Uh, of course, in the financial industry, over many centuries, financial institutions have been keeping, you know, very uh, business, based on two things, intermediary function. Mm -hmm. Intermediary function means when you save money in the bank, you are sure the bank will pay you back yeah. with interest. Yeah. The bank will find someone who needs your money. So that's intermediary mm -hmm. function. And then second, uh, credit. You don't have you know, money, but you can borrow money from the bank. Mm. The bank will act as intermediary to give the money. So this is very, these two are very important functions. And having said that, Nowadays, because of the uh, you know, blockchain technologies, these two functions will 
I think it soon will go away. Mm. Because nowadays, as you see, there are P2Ps, people to people yeah. and peer to peer. They exchange the currencies and they do the trade without this intermediate function. And I think this is irresistible changes, mm. okay? So, and also- uh, You think good Bitcoin is enabling that process? Yeah, mm. uh, because from very con conventional standpoint of view, the Bitcoin is not yet early stage to be accepted mm -hmm. official currency. But let me uh, compare this uh -huh. one likewise, the early stage of automobile, mm. Henry Ford uh, or early stage of the automobile. The horse red carriages and cars are running same. Together, yes. And mm. car was slower than carriages. Mm. People complain about car, but you know what happened later. So this is something like that. Mm. So Bitcoin itself, maybe there are two, Bitcoin itself is instable and may not comply with the, all the requirements that can be identified or accepted as official currency from current standpoint. Mm -hmm. But as technology evolves, these kind of you know, uh, dilemmas we are facing will be soon corrected. Take an example, mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin itself will be traded on Chicago Merchandise Exchange starting from December 11th mm. as an official commodity product. That does not necessarily mean that Bitcoin can be accepted as official currency, but you know, existing regulatory bodies are accepting and embracing this Bitcoin as means of trading product, mm -hmm. which will smoothen this speculative high volatilities. Mm -hmm. So as time goes by, I think the Bitcoin will be, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies will be a main means of you know, tr you know, exchanges and uh, holding the values and identifies as a, you know, currencies. Mm. Well, the context uh, in which uh, most lay people hear about Bitcoin um, is through stories of people making a fortune overnight uh, right. thanks to rising prices. But the price has been so volatile in recent weeks, soaring or plummeting in, uh, by double digit percentages. Uh, this year, Bitcoin has soared uh, over 700 yeah. percent. Yeah. And in the last five years, uh, it has skyrocketed 40,000 percent just in five years. Mm -hmm. I agree that, you know, maybe the Chicago uh, Mercantile Exchange started to acknowledge the wide tradability of, of bitcoins. But again, we have to really uh, think about the serious consequences of these volatilities mm -hmm. because We've seen uh, cases in, in history, and history tells us that speculative bubbles uh, will almost always burst. burst yeah. I think the government really has to seriously think about you know, when and where mm -hmm. the, the, the bubbles are going to burst. I'd like to you know, define this kind of period as mm -hmm. trying and error period. Ah. History tells us to learn from the mistakes. Uh -huh. So we all acknowledge what are current problems, but I'm certainly sure the current technology development will resolve this kind of technical issues. And from a psychological standpoint, people's you know, you know, speculative mindset, well, we have learned already from many cases, mm -hmm. hacking and bankruptcies. And also, uh, there are many governments, uh, Germany or Japan, that are accepting Bitcoin as means of trade, not currency, but as, as a means of trade, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, token of trade. And also, uh, International Monetary Fund is closely monitoring this Bitcoin involvement of the Bitcoin, what you know, each government can do. However, they are aware of this Bitcoin is coming. So one of the signs uh, is a significant uh, benchmark that Chicago Merchandise Exchange is the most traditional body. They accept Bitcoin as a means of global trading products, means that there are a lot of volatilities and demands for trading like as oil and mm -hmm, wheat. Mm -hmm. So I think this is current trade uh, the situation happening. So two things, technology development will resolve this kind of technical issues. Mm -hmm. Regulatory issues, I think each government is fully aware and they accept that this is the phenomenon they cannot totally ignore. Mm -hmm. Rather, they have to modify and they have to properly control these changes within their regulatory boundaries in a way they can accommodate. Yes, yeah, so as we've discussed, uh, there are uh, concerns voiced about this uh, Bitcoin boom, and uh, these are not just limited to Korea. Take a look at this next video clip. One of the biggest points of skepticism about Bitcoin is that it is a speculative asset. 
The price of a single Bitcoin for its first transaction in 2010 was only 0.003 US dollars. But it has recently skyrocketed above $7,000, sparking fear that the cryptocurrency could crash. The sharp price fluctuations in recent months have also triggered concerns over the speculative nature of Bitcoin. The anonymity that is provided by Bitcoin comes with increased convenience, but it could also be a powerful tool for crime. For example, ransomware attackers demanded payment in Bitcoin, and there have been multiple cases where the currency was used in illicit trades such as drug trafficking. In 2014, Mt. Gox, once the largest Bitcoin exchange in the world, filed for bankruptcy, hurting tens of thousands of users. More recently, BitThumb, Korea's biggest exchange for cryptocurrencies, suffered a server failure due to an unexpected surge in transaction, leaving many users with monetary losses. With uncertainty prevailing in the cryptocurrency market, whether Bitcoin will go down in history as a revolutionary currency or a speculative bubble depends on how these challenges are addressed. As uh, seen in the video, a Seoul-based cryptocurrency exchange recently experienced a major um, server crash, which caused the, the price of Bitcoin Cash to tumble, and there have been similar incidents overseas. The Bitcoin system works without an administrator, so if something goes wrong, who, who should be held liable? I think there's no legal responsibility for any issuer to be liable for these kind of um, accidents or... Basically, it's at their own risk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So nobody is going to take responsibility for anything because in the Mt. Gox mm -hmm. uh, case, it was basically hacked by outsiders. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost impossible to track these hackers. Yeah, yeah. So the exchange, uh, the, the people who run the exchange, they are not the ones who did the hacking. At least, I mean, that is their assertion. And probably that's true. So if any outside hacker did those kind of accidents, they're the ones who should take responsibility and, and liability. So mm -hmm. basically the investors are not protected. And that's why I, I raised concerns earlier about, you know, there are serious consumer protection issues mm -hmm. surrounding mm -hmm. Bitcoin mm -hmm. investments. Which is why um, some people are calling for regulatory or government oversight. But that would take away what makes Bitcoin so unique. Uh, what do you think, Professor Lee? Well, I think there is a move going on amongst the uh, uh, country level to coordinate to how they can accommodate these changes in Bitcoin, the mm. risks the consumers are taking over. Take an example, China is strictly uh, prohibiting uh, Bitcoin initial offering. Yeah. However, uh, at the national level research center, they are closely monitoring what they can do uh, with the Bitcoin, meaning oh. that the US dollar has been the reference currency for over more than 50 years. Mm -hmm. And China is not happy with that as number G2 in other countries, Japan. So they are looking at Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as another way of reference currencies. However, mm -hmm. uh, with the current you know, technolo technological problems and uh, the legal issues involved, international legal issues involved, who can control, who can actually regulate these currencies, is an issue on the table. So uh, sooner or later, I think not today, but within the next five years, I presume that this kind of issue can be accommodated at the uh, unilateral level. Mm. So people can use Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies as means of exchange, and then they can enjoy more freedom. Then on the contrary, the conventional uh, you know, financial institutions, those who are running business based on two things, as I said, intermediate function, which is already you're seeing mm -hmm. that it's going away. And credits, yes, credit risk is still lies there, but technology will help to reduce these credit lines. When you give the money to someone, you can have that people, person's credit score mm -hmm, and everything, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which is you know, quite possible nowadays. So cryptocurrency, uh, you know, starting with Bitcoin, will be a revolutionary starting point. Not today, we have, we see a lot of problems, but I think those problems can be, you know, uh, we all recognize risk, 
open risk is no longer risk. That's what I'm saying. So you're saying that China uh, has banned the trading of cryptocurrencies, but uh, at the government level, it is studying. Yeah, uh, uh, oh. initial coin offering mm. is at the private level. Mm -hmm. the Chinese government is strictly banning them. Mm. However, at the national research center level, mm. they are investigating or they're researching very hard how to use Bitcoin in a way of you know, currency or to counter uh, fight with uh, US dollar power. Mm. Yeah. Is that being done in Korea? At least looking into <laughs> Of course, I mean, yeah. um, you know, the Ministry of uh, Strategy and Finance and the Financial Services uh, Commission have been studying the use of mm. Bitcoin mm. In, in Korea mm. and also, you know, cross-border transactions as well. And our institute, uh, research fellows within our institute, I've also uh, been studying, mm -hmm. including myself. Mm -hmm. The FIU, who, which is in charge of the uh, anti-money laundering uh, issues, the FIU people has, al has also, they've internally reviewed all the uh, uh, anti-money laundering issues mm -hmm. and, and terrorist mm -hmm. financing issues mm -hmm. regarding uh, the, the use of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, the Korean government is well aware of the uses and, and the transactions that are uh, undergoing within the ju jurisdiction of the Republic of Korea. And not only uh, the Korean government, but you know, many governments uh, around, especially uh, the advanced economies, mm. uh, have been studying uh, the use of Bitcoins. Japan has gone in the other direction. It has legitimized cryptocurrencies through government registration and regulation. Well, again, Japan uh, is is actually number three economy in the world. Mm. And Japanese currency is not quite welcomed in the global market. It's saying, you know, benchmarking currency versus to US, how Japanese yen value against the US in terms of trade. But uh, there is internal discussion very actively happening that there is, and also there is notion in Japan, Japan had once been behind the schedule of IT revolution by back by 20 years. Mm -hmm. At this time, they don't want to be left behind. Ah. So they, uh, they're trying to take a lead in this regard. So they legitimized uh, Bitcoin, not as official currency, but they opened window mm -hmm. for the uh, exchange tool. One last question. Will Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency uh, or virtual currency for that matter um, ever replace fiat money? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. This is a fight between uh, maybe shield and spear. Mm -hmm. However, the fundamental issue is the technology revolution underlining this change is a blockchain technology which will demolish all conventional uh, thinking, I think. Mm. So uh, sooner or later, I think, it, I don't know, it can be five years or 10 years. However, uh, less than I expect, mm -hmm. I think the change can be accommodated and the risk can be accommodated. So Bitcoin could be one of the other way of exchange and whether we may call it currency or not, but certainly uh, it will meet the requirements as this current currency carries on. Mm. Dr. Lee, what do you think? It's, it's very hard to say, but I think, you know, people sometimes are confused with the notion of a cashless mm -hmm. society versus the use of Bitcoin as being treated as a legal tender. Ah. If we think about the term cashless society, it means that there's not going to be any banknotes or coins mm -hmm. And probably some uh, people are going to, you know, have electronic wallets. Basically, all transactions are going to be, uh, you know, monitored or, or uh, accounted by <laughs> the central bank. Mm. So that is a cashless society, not a society... Where there's society. still a legal tender, right? Right. Mm. So mm. the legal tender is only issued by the central bank. And all of the, uh, the legal tender is uh, issued exactly by the cent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and issued and, 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 and you know, sometimes they would issue more, sometimes they would withdraw money from uh, the financial markets. That's cashless society, not where you have legal tender being uh, replaced by Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Right? So I, I think see. we have to sort of discriminate or differentiate mm. between the two. Okay. okay. Well, uh, for now, it looks like uh, cryptocurrencies are here to stay, but uh, it does remain to be seen whether they can actually evolve uh, into a practical currency for daily use or even a stable asset class. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Lee and Professor Lee, for thank your you insights much. today. That's all for this week, our friend. We'll be back next week. Thanks for watching.